Hi everyone, I'm Sonia Kella. I'm a breast radiologist and I will be going over some challenging cases that we encounter in breast imaging. From the cases that I'll be showing today, we are going to understand the challenges that are associated with the diagnosis of breast cancer in women under the age of 40. We're also going to understand the limitations that dense breast tissue uh, poses and the current recommendations for screening women with dense breasts. And finally, we're also going to understand the current recommendations for screening women after they have had mastectomy. I have no disclosures. Our first case is that of a 38-year-old female who presents with an area of palpable concern behind her nipple and she reports a recent history of trauma. So as the arrows there demonstrate, there appear to be some dilated ducts behind the nipple, and there looks to be some specular echoes there, uh, possibly calcifications, possibly blood, possibly protein, not really sure. The next appropriate step in the management of this patient is to do a diagnostic mammogram. And we start by marking the area of palpable concern with a triangular marker that's placed on the skin. In that region, we see that there are pleomorphic calcifications. This makes it clear that what we were seeing on the ultrasound were calcifications in the ducts. Therefore, the findings are suspicious. The patient underwent a stereotactic biopsy and the diagnosis was Paget's disease of the nipple. This is a rare form of breast cancer that starts in the ducts and invades the nipple, and usually we see a unilateral scaling and ulceration of the nipple. What threw us off in this patient is that she did not have that usual appearance of the nipple, and also she reported a history of trauma. This case stresses the importance of doing a diagnostic mammogram in addition to a ultrasound when a woman over the age of 30 presents with a new palpable lump. It's important not to be fooled by the history of trauma as breast cancer is always on the differential in a woman with a new palpable lump. And remember that if ultrasound is the only possible modality to image a patient with a new palpable lump, such as if she presents to the emergency department, it's important to recommend that the patient have a diagnostic mammogram as an outpatient. Moving on to case two. This is a 31-year-old female who is 34 weeks pregnant, and she feels a left axillary swelling and also complains that her left breast feels larger than her right. Also, the skin of that left breast looks like it has an orange peel appearance. So the arrows demonstrate axillary adenopathy on the top set of images and vague shadowing of the left breast with the mass at four o'clock that measures nine millimeters. The patient underwent ultrasound guided biopsy of the lesions and the diagnosis was pregnancy associated invasive ductal carcinoma. This is also known as PRBC and it occurs with an incidence of one out of 3,000 pregnant women in the United States. We're noticing that there is an increasing incidence of pregnant women getting breast cancer because the maternal age is increasing. In women with pregnancy-associated breast cancer, the tumors tend to be larger and more notably advanced than in non-pregnant women of the same age. And the cousin of the pregnancy-associated breast cancer is the postpartum pregnancy-associated breast cancer, which occurs, of course, after the pregnancy has been completed. It accounts for an estimated 35 to 55% of breast cancer cases in women that are younger than 45, and it is associated with worse survival rates and increased risk of metastases. This is an important image demonstrating the algorithm that is used to work up patients who are pregnant or have recently been pregnant when they present with a new clinical breast complaint. It's important to note that ultrasound generally is the mainstay of workup of a new palpable area of concern in a pregnant woman, but it is not contraindicated to do a mammogram 
if needed, especially if that ultrasound is negative and the area the patient is feeling is clinically concerning, or if there's a finding that's very suspicious for malignancy on the ultrasound and you wanna evaluate the rest of the breast. In a lactating female, if they're over the age of 30, we do start with mammography and then proceed with ultrasound. And in women under the age of 30, in general, we do start with the ultrasound and we can always add the mammogram on afterwards. Moving on to case three, we're still talking about young females who are presenting with new breast complaints. This is a 36 year old female. She has a family history of breast cancer that's in her mother and her grandmother, and that puts her at a lifetime risk of 18.6%, which is considered an intermediate risk. Anything over a 20% lifetime risk is considered high, but this is still relatively high. She palpates a lump behind her right nipple, and we can see that a BB marker is placed there. On this 2D mammogram, we really don't see much that correlates with the area of palpable concern. However, we then do a 3D mammogram or digital breast tomosynthesis on this patient. Same thing, we can see the BB marker there again where she feels the lump. But on this set of images, because of the 3D technology, we see a vague mass hiding in the dense breast tissues. On ultrasound, there is definitely an irregular heterogeneous mass that correlates to the palpable area of concern. This was biopsied with ultrasound guidance. Results from the biopsy in this patient demonstrated a premenopausal invasive ductal carcinoma. The patient had very dense breast tissue. It was difficult to visualize the carcinoma on the 2D images, but on the 3D images, it was much easier. Digital breast tomosynthesis has been shown to improve cancer detection rate, even in dense breasts, and also reduce recall rate in screening mammography. There's still ongoing research to determine whether there's improvement with respect to disease-specific mortality. There's an incremental cancer detection rate when we compare 3D to 2D of an additional 0.7 to 2.7 cancers per 1,000 exams conducted. Because of this small difference, uh, and again, because there has not been a proven disease-specific mortality, it remains optional whether a facility wants to screen patients with 2D or 3D technology. But if you ask any breast imager, 3D is definitely the choice modality. Here's a companion case, and this is to drive home the message that it is very difficult for us to detect breast cancer when a patient has dense breast tissue. So this is a 78 year old female. So we're now in the postmenopausal phase. Uh, patients can still have dense breasts. And this is a screening mammogram that's done. And we see an area that's in the upper outer quadrant of the right breast, possibly questionably a mass 3D didn't really help us in this case. So we move to ultrasound and ultrasound her upper outer quadrant. And there in the right breast at 10 o'clock, we see an irregular hypochoic mass that looks suspicious. This mass undergoes ultrasound guided biopsy. And this is postmenopausal invasive breast cancer. So the important point here is dense breasts are challenging in mammography at any age because of the masking effect. Mammographic density is also an independent risk factor for developing breast cancer. And women with extremely dense breasts have been shown to have a four to six fold higher risk of developing breast cancer when compared to women with fatty breasts. A lot of attention has been placed on the dilemma of dense breast tissue. Current guidelines for supplemental screening in women with dense breasts is that if they have an average or intermediate lifetime risk, so a risk lifetime risk of under 20%, the additional study of choice, if the patient wants supplemental screening, is MRI, but ultrasound and contrast enhanced mammography can be done in the place of MRI if the patient cannot have or is unwilling to have breast MRI. 
Sometimes the resources are limited. Sometimes breast MRI is expensive. Uh, sometimes the patient just doesn't want to be injected with gadolinium and go into an MRI machine. So while MRI is the first choice to have supplemental dense breast screening when the patient desires it, certainly breast ultrasound or contrast enhanced mammography can be used in its place. It's important to know that 8% of cancers are not detected in women with either ultrasound or mammography. And that's the reason that breast MRI has taken the number one place for a supplemental screening tool. In terms of contrast enhanced mammography, it's not a widely used imaging modality. It has a similar sensitivity and specificity to breast MRI. So it's a very good way of detecting breast cancer. But the reason that it cannot be widely used is because there are inherent difficulties with it, um, especially because a lot of mammography departments are uncomfortable placing an IV and uh, injecting the iodinated contrast, which increases uh, the risk of allergies to contrast. And then also this involves a higher radiation dose, which women are not particularly fond of. Finally, on our last case, this is another hot topic in breast imaging in recent years that has gained attention. This case shows a woman who has a history of breast cancer on the right. She had a mastectomy with implant reconstruction. And usually we only screen the native contralateral breast in a woman with mastectomy. But in her case, she happened to have both breasts, both the reconstructed post mastectomy breast on the right, as well as the native breast on the left screened. On the implant displaced view, we can see that there is a tiny spiculated mass that's in the tissues just anterior to the pectoralis muscle. So this looks quite suspicious. And on ultrasound, there is in fact an irregular hypochoic mass. This was biopsied, and this came back as a breast cancer recurrence after a mastectomy. So sort of a chance case, um, but we did learn a lot from this because it forced us to look at what the guidelines are for screening women after they've had mastectomy. So although most breast tissue is removed after mastectomy, recurrences can occur because there's always a little bit of residual tissue that could be left behind. Recurrence is most common after mastectomy in the skin, followed by the subcutaneous tissue, as we saw in this case, and then finally deep to the pectoralis muscle. And the recurrence rate has been measured to be anywhere from 2 to 15%, depending on the initial type of breast cancer the patient had, as well as the stage. In order to delve into this topic a little further, we looked at the American College of Radiology appropriateness criteria to determine what is appropriate when we think about screening women who have had mastectomy, because we know that there is a very small uh, possibility that they could have a recurrence. But according to the appropriateness criteria, there is insufficient evidence to support routine screening of a post mastectomy breast with any of the regular modalities we use, mammography, ultrasound, contrast enhanced MRI or even nuclear medicine. The only exception that the appropriateness criteria mentions is that of autologous reconstruction or flap reconstruction. These patients, even though they've had mastectomy, may be screened with mammography and were given the designation of may be appropriate. So it's something to think about in women who have had a flap reconstruction after mastectomy. Currently, physical exam is the mainstay of screening in these patients. The native contralateral breast should be screened per the usual American College of Radiology guidelines. And for symptomatic patients after mastectomy, let's say they're presenting with a lump or suspicious skin changes, ultrasound would be the initial imaging of choice for that region of course, mammography can be added as a supplement. So in conclusion, I showed you some interesting, challenging cases in breast imaging that we 
encounter. All of the cases that I presented today are from the VRAD teaching file images and have all been recent hot topics in breast imaging. So I hope you learned something and thanks for listening.